end of the year, Bitcoin price will hit the 90,000 uh, mm -hmm. based on our uh, assessment and model. But, the, you know, during periods of noise, I think that a lot of volatility obviously depends on demand, supply, as well as the adoption process. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Markets Daily. I'm your host, Helene Braun. It's Monday, May 13th, 2024. And so far, it's looking pretty mixed across the board in terms of prices this morning. About nine out of 20 assets in the CoinS20 index are trading higher, though, including Bitcoin, which is up by about 2.6%, trading at $62,710. Ether is also trading higher at $2,964, up by about 1.3%. Some things to be on a lookout for this week, perhaps the most relevant for crypto markets, are the 13F filings that are due on Wednesday and should give us more insight into who holds the spot Bitcoin ETFs and who doesn't. More importantly, also out on Wednesday is a fresh CPI report or inflation report here in the U.S., which Forecasters expect that inflation rose 3.4% year over year and 0.4% month over month. So still seeing some pressure on that front as well. But we'll talk about how the report could impact Bitcoin and the rest of the market with our guests. So let's bring him in. Joining us today is CK Zhang, co-founder and CIO of ZX Squared Capital. Good morning. Morning. Thank you for having me. Of course. Thanks so much for being here. ZK, we start off every show asking about a prediction. This could be for today, for this week, or for this year, or even long term. So what's your call of the day today? Well, I mean, day to day is very noisy. I think it's a lot of noise coming, go. Um, we look at, we actually, if the hedge fund using option strategy, look at a much more longer term or media term, if you will. Um, our call for the end of the year, Bitcoin price will hit the 90,000 uh, mm -hmm. based on our uh, assessment and model. But, it, you know, during periods of noise, I think that a lot of volatility obviously depends on demand, supply, as well as the adoption process. So if you say 90,000 at the end of the year, what are some of the catalysts that you think will push the price higher in the next couple of months? Well, I think the key actually is the ETF. Uh, I think the Bitcoin spot ETF is great. Uh, I think it brings a lot of full institution investors and people historically had a trouble uh, or had a concern to invest in the asset class. Um, I think the the, this cycle, I think, is very different than the previous cycle. I think the ETF will clearly get the people more comfortable. I think the question right now, when I talk to many of my uh, friends in the traditional finance space, uh, which I, I work in the traditional finance for over 30 years, uh, the real is why I'm investing in Bitcoin. And that question I got asked, uh, you know, again and again, every time I, I meet the people, um, and it's, uh, again, it's still early adoption stage. I mean, it's only 3% to 4% of the population right now uh, actually own some of the, of the crypto. I think the adoption from today to the, you know, 15% of the world population own of Bitcoin or other cryptos to the early majority of stage will take a time. I think maybe next 10 years or so. That's the process will get people excited. And I think, you know, people always thought about the Bitcoin at the early days, maybe a scam. And, you know, I'm one of them at the early days from a Wall Street perspective, are really concerned about how Bitcoin stay here for long term. Today, that question, I think it's much less relevant. So what, what changed your mind? I think there's multiple things. One is, I think, the network effect. I think when the when network is small, it's questionable. When the network actually reach 200 million people, that's a pretty sizable population. 
And uh, the network effect uh, really follow the um, Metcalf law that the value of the system is the proportion to the square of the size of network. And uh, when I get uh, my hedge fund running three years ago, I saw the volume, uh, and not only that, the financial product actually become mature. Uh, not only the futures, but the more importantly, the options market. So when Bitcoin option actually becoming a phenomenon, and the more and more people get involved in Bitcoin option vol uh, uh, in space. And right now, I mean, basically option trading in a record of the record of trading volume. Um, so I think that's very, very promising. And the narrative of Bitcoin is never better than before. Because mm -hmm. to me, if people think about long term, I mean, the fiat currency right now is disaster, right? Every country print the money. So think about Bitcoin at the or original form is really think about when the financial you know, crisis of 08 hit, US government to print the money, trillions of trillions. Uh, when COVID hit the market, well, you know what? The government prints three more times of money. And all of a sudden right now, the US government right now, the debt is reached 30 trillion. And interest rates annually will pay a, a, a more than trillion. That's not really sustainable. And not only the US government, I mean, pretty much every major uh, central bank print the money. That's right. one thing. I mean, the other thing is the geopolitical situation right now is clearly uh, troublesome. And in the normal of the trouble in the world, people hold the real value or real asset. And I think Bitcoin right now is really becoming digital gold, if you will. So speaking of interest rates, I want to get your thoughts on the short term outlook specifically for this week, which is a pretty big week for crypto markets in the US. What do you expect from the rest of the week? As I just mentioned, I'm seeing a mix of red and green across all assets, but Bitcoin and Ethereum are both up. Is this a result or is this an anticipation of the CPI report that's coming in this week? Or what else are you watching? Well well, Bitcoin, I mean, in, in some ways, uh, impacted by interest rate in a way, but in long term, it's not correlated with other asset class, right? Mm -hmm. uh, even though today, Bitcoin, you can think about digital gold, but still, there's quite a amount of uncertainty in the adoption early stage. So there's a certain amount of correlation with the other high-tech stock, for example. But that's in the kind of near term. So I think the interest rate and the, and the inflation that near term, you know, make a noise. But every time when markets fell off in Bitcoin, it's great entry point to get into. Uh, and, and that's because the long term narratives are phenomenal. So I think people need a, a, a risk tolerance to ensure that you get in early on in Bitcoin is a long term investment. My colleague this morning reported that if Bitcoin drops below the $60,000 mark, which currently I think we're around 62000 but that could trigger a panic sale among investors. Do you agree with that? And why or why not? Uh, I think it's not going to be panic. It's panic to people who are not believers. And mm. I think it will be great news for people actually believe a long term. So I think it's, uh, uh, I think it's, a, it's the kind of a people's uh, commitment to, to Bitcoin. And that's back to my early time in terms of talk about the, uh, uh, the narrative and the thesis of Bitcoin. And if you truly believe the fiat currency and geopolitical issue will have a long-term last effect for the financial system, Bitcoin is today the best asset class, not only last 10 years, probably for the next, next 10 years. And uh, what I believe is today it's the near term demand supply issue driving the Bitcoin price. Because after happening, because many of the miners probably fought to sell some of their reserve, Bitcoin reserve, to make sure they pay the expense. Given the Bitcoin right now, the mining cost is getting higher and higher. Uh, you know, average probably right now is north of 50,000. Even in some of, <clears throat> some of the most efficient 
miner probably will uh, cost 40000 or more. So that's why I think the selling pressure uh, from miner is one. But also some of the other, like FTX liquidation, obviously impact some of the supply uh, of Bitcoin um, and crypto. But I think uh, the adoption of an ETF uh, at the early days, the first two or three months of the beginning of the year was great. I think that it stalled uh, last, uh, you know, three to four weeks or so. Uh, I think that's the, the thing is critical for us to look into it. I think it may take some time for the adoption because right now, even the ETF, Bitcoin ETF, you know, the size wide is pretty sizable. It's already AUM is about 50 billion or so. The net inflow is about 12 billion. So it's a phenomena and it's very, very successful this year already. I think a lot of people right now is waiting for Bitcoin price to go lower to jump in. So when, you know, when the Bitcoin price hit the 55,000, uh, about, you know, a week or so ago, I said that's a lot of people that's going to jump in and, and it did. So today, if I look at the Bitcoin price, you know, 55 is something there's massive interest getting. People still waiting to get entry, good entry point. But mm -hmm. I think people should not wait for long because I think given if you look at the price, people actually you know, talk about price. I say, why it costs so much, you know, 60,000 or so. I say that's irrelevant in a way because that price is just nominal price. You know, if you compare this price to previous cycle high of last cycle of 68,000, today's price, you know, post the halving, it's almost equivalent of, you know, half of the price. So, you know, 62,000 today, it's almost like 31,000, you know, two or three years ago in a similar comparison. So people cannot look at absolute dollar term. People look at the adoption process before and after happening. Right. We'll have to wrap it here, CK, but thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you very much. That was CK Zhang, co-founder and CIO of ZX Squared Capital. Thanks for tuning in to today's show. I'm Helene Braun, and I'll be back tomorrow with a new episode. I hope you have a great week.